Hello again. So I was contacted through uh, one of my videos that I have on YouTube. Somebody commented and asked if I'd reach out to them via email. They had some questions for me about hunting in Ocala. They've never hunted there before. And if I could give them some pointers on how to approach the place and how to scout it and where they should hunt. Now Ocala is a really big place and there's definitely deer all over it. But to up your odds, you want to be in an area of high deer concentration. Now, of course, nobody wants to give away their honey holes, and I didn't want to direct them to right where I see all my concentrations of deer, but I did give them some pointers on what to look for, um, things to do when you come into a new area, and how maybe you should approach that. And that gave me the idea of putting together a video of if I was to go to a new area, how would I approach scouting it? How would I first, you know, mainly use Google Earth to set up a, a plan to scout slash hunt it on the first time that I go in there? So that's something I'm going to put together for you today. And I'm actually going to pick one of the wildlife management areas that I don't hunt. And the reason why I want to do this is I'm going to look at one of these areas and really look for good places to hunt without feeling like giving away all the spots that I may know. Now, people who may hunt this area probably are going to be upset if I'm pointing out any of the good spots, but who knows? I can't guarantee that just from Google Earth I can narrow down the spots. But hopefully, this way I'm not holding back any information I may see while I go through Google Earth and give you really good ideas of good spots and how to find these spots just from looking at aerial photos. Okay, so the area I decided to do a little pre-scouting on is Green Swamp. Now, whenever you're going into a new area, the first thing you always wanna do is look over the brochure, see uh, what rules may differ from where you normally hunt. Of course, always check out what uh, quota permits are required for it. Also check out definitely uh, size and bag limits on that. Some areas do still allow uh, uh, antlerless deer during the archery season so that's an important thing to look at um, just go through um, like I said every uh, management area differs slightly in some variations also when the seasons are the dates may be different so you want to verify this before going into an area the next thing I always look at is of course the map from here I usually just mainly look to see you know the roads that cut through and around the management area uh, here Green Swamp has a lot of improved roads throughout it so that should be uh, real easy driving all throughout the area when looking at this portion of it though a lot of times I'll look at areas where there, there's a good distance between the road and the boundaries uh, sometimes in these areas is it's a long walk but uh, you get very little hunting pressure back there and deer have just learned to uh, congregate far off these roads same thing when you have two roads side by side this is something that once I get into Google Earth I'll check out to see uh, what's over there here's another big open area although it's right next to the highway it is uh, a little ways off from any of the main roads um, Sometimes don't pass up the areas right by the entrance. Here's the entrance marked here. A lot of times people will drive in and go to the far reaches of, uh, of the management area when you can take a short drive and find some really good hot spots really close. Um, I have a good spot in Tiger Bay that's like that. There's a number of entrances into the Tiger Bay area um, and some of them people just drive in and they go towards the back and everybody drives past these front areas and sometimes you can find some good uh, good spots there now trying to narrow in um, the area from Google Earth this was actually easy you got Lake County Sumter County and Polk County so you got this intersection of the county lines and depending on uh, what you click on Google Earth those county lines will show up so it's fairly easy to track this down All right, so when we get into Google Earth, as I pointed out, there's that intersection of the three counties. It's right here. It's real easy uh, to discern this from an aerial view. There's also a marker for Green Swamp itself. And because it's not developed in, in this area of Florida, it stands out pretty easily as well. 
Zooming in, you can easily identify all the improved roads of the area. This is helpful. Get your bearings on what you're looking at and where you want to, you know, what roads you would take to get getting close to an area. GPS, of course, is going to help you with that as well. So in looking at this, that first area I mentioned where there was a big space open from the roads, that's this area right over here. Turns out that um, it's not a lot of densely treed areas. Um, there is this nice spot over here, which I marked. Call it, I marked it as high traffic because the other thing I noticed is there is a number of uh, trails running around that area. Um, even though the regulations say motor vehicles have to stick to the roads, that doesn't always hold true in these areas. And it certainly seems like ATVs and four-wheelers are running along these trails fairly often. And uh, with that going on out there, I usually just walk into my spots, um, park my truck and walk in. This is over a mile walk and there's nothing, uh, there's no point in walking that far if somebody's gonna pass you on an ATV. So although this is a nice, dense, uh, good bedding area with all the possible traffic on these trails, they're well used, well worn. Uh, it's an area I would actually stay out of. And that's kind of a, you know, this is where the pre-scouting comes in handy is if I came out to this road and started hiking in and hoping to get past all the ATV trails, you just realize that it was just too far of a walk. So you save a lot of time, um, from just scouting an area that's just gonna be, probably has some good hunting pressure to it with all the activity going on there. One of the other spots I found um, was down in this little spot. Mark that here, call it a funnel and bedding area. I came across it, if you go back to 2016, they did a prescribed burn here. This is always something that you can look at um, prescribed burns that are like from a year or two previously means you're going to have a lot of easy to reach browse for the deer. So it's going to be good feeding areas for them. You can see there's some sparse trees, um, and it's starting to green up in this area, but from the prescribed burn, they had, uh, the tractors had done fire breaks around it and that can make for a good walkout for you. As I moved over and followed this trail out, like I said, it's not a well-used ATV trail, um, but it's going to make for an easy walk. And, and I found a few areas that were good uh, pinch points. You can see you got cypress heads here. You can usually discern cypress heads from the uh, pine simply because in the you know winter months they've grayed out with losing their leaves. So you can see there's a um, few pinch points between these cypress heads, which I started looking at these, and as I looked a little bit closer, I found this section of some dense vegetation and trees here as well. So this could be a good bedding area right in here. Of course, you'd have to get down, you know, boots on the ground and, and do some scouting, but there's a lot of open fields, open areas, and you're gonna, the deer are gonna be looking for some thick vegetation to bed down in. So here it allows for that bedding area. I went ahead and did a polygon around it just to get an idea of what the area was. So if you do the measurements on it, it's 40, just over 42 acres in that area, which you definitely hold a, a doe family group and a couple bucks in that area. So this is one area I would check out. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom out here real quick. This is the area that I wanna point out to you, but kind of taking a step back, looking at the bigger picture. So you got your roads through here, a number of cypress heads along the roads, and this large cypress head right here, kind of block off these areas, unless somebody's gotten and done some hiking down and in between them, or looked on Google Earth to see this area back here. You may not notice it as well. Here, you definitely have a nice cypress swamp. You can see it's grayed out from the cypress trees losing their leaves. This is probably very swampy here too, and, and how much water it holds probably depends on uh, whether it's the rainy season or whether, it's, uh, whether we had a lot of rain that year. Uh, this is likely not just um, cypress, but also those sweet bay trees 
Um, I find that to be a really good area when you get into general gun in the dry season. This will still be wet, cool, and moist. And it's also thickly vegetated, so it tends to be a good, uh, good hiding and bedding area for deer when they're feeling a lot of pressure. That's usually a hard place to hunt and still can be a bit wet. But what I found is when you zoom in fairly close, you can see right through here and around this backside of this larger cypress head, there's a strip of high ground that passes between the two. And uh, I think that would be a good funnel point being that you have the road and traffic right here, the deer are going to find some way to travel parallel to that and not have to be in close proximity of everybody on the road. And I think this would be a good place to look. You're only looking at from if you park down here, if you find a trail zigzagging through to get up, it's only about 900 yards of a walk, which is not far whatsoever. Here you got about a 70 yard opening between these. And that's a good funnel point. And if you zoom in a little closer here, you only got about 40 or 50 yards. So this would be a good area to find and set up. Now you don't want to just set up between the two trees if there's no deer signs. You want to look to see if you got a rub line or some scrapes coming in this area that's going to show you that the deer are using it frequently. Um, you could get deeper in here as a scouting run. I would probably make my way far up in here just to see how much activity is here but I'd probably only be concerned with maybe hunting right through this area or further out. You don't want to get too much in their bedding area and disrupt them. Just find the areas where you may either one catching them going back into here or on their way out in the evenings. Now at the north end of this strip there is a possibility of having some people come in here and sometimes it's good to always uh, kind of like check the back door to an area you're hunting just to see um, if there's people coming down through here. This looks pretty well blocked off by some cypress trees which is going to tell you that there's some low wet grounds there and typically you don't get many people trudging through there but it's possible that somebody's made a, a trail through there and has found somewhere to hunt there as well. So that's just something to check out. Um, I think this would be the first place I would go to look. Just like I said, it should be easy to get to if nobody's already there. And uh, it just sets you up well. You have a, a good bedding area, a good open area for browse and forbs, which is going to be a prime food for the deer, and some pinch points to get them on a funnel where you can get them coming right by you, especially during archery when you're going to you know, be dealing with 20, 30 yards and not looking for you know, an 80, 100 yard shot. I also went through, I did a polygon for this and came up, this also, this area just right here, this also hold, holds about 45 acres um, and that's just the high ground and I think there's still areas off to this side that's just going to hold some more deer as well. So there's definitely possibility of that area holding some good deer. It's just going to be if uh, the deer are truly there, always looks for the scrubs and scrapes another spot similar to this one just on the east side of the cypress swamp now the cypress swamp runs really close to this edge here so you might not get as much deer bedding into the swamp if it's deep enough water and rarely do they cross through too much but um, there's a strip of dry ground doing the same thing running up along here between the cypress heads and over here on the road it's fairly blocked off from you know just typical easy access um, there are a few little looks like foot trails cutting through this would be a good area to cut in and uh, see if you got some deer activity crossing through there so this is one another area that I really liked something that's always a good uh, possibility to check out whenever you're in a new area is the boundaries. So I marked the boundary here at the top. This is the north boundary. Now aside from uh, just this area, it's always good to look at the boundaries to see if there's any agriculture or private land outside the boundaries. On one of uh, the management areas I hunt, I, uh, one of my best honey holes is set up about 300-400 yards from the boundary of the management area. Now there's private property just beyond the management area, 
and uh, they happen to have a, uh, if you walk the property line, you can see under their property, they've got uh, a 55 gallon drum feeder stationed about 50 yards in on their property. Uh, from my stand, I can hear it run in the morning and the evenings. And so that just puts a lot of deer in that area to begin with. Uh, we, of course, can't put feeders out on the management area, but what they're doing is putting a feeder in on their property and drawing the deer out of the management area to the feeder. And they actually have a box blind set up there. But works out for me as well, and that's just something to look into when you're uh, scouting an area is walk the perimeters, the boundary markers, and see if there's uh, some private property there. Here I took note of this, um, kind of looking for the same thing, but just one, seeing how much pressure you may get from this side. You may get a lot of deer crossing in here if there's no pressure. This actually, on the north side of the boundary, seems to be the Ricolum uh, Wildlife Management Area. So it's going to be receiving a fair amount of hunting pressure as well. I still liked it. There's some major trails that's possibly be being used by ATVs. But over here on this side, there was definitely some uh, thick vegetation, thick tree cover that could provide some really good bedding spots um, up in this area. As you can see, the, the road doesn't get as well used going up here. And you may find some good, uh, good deer activity up this direction. So this was just an area I liked. I, I would consider checking it out. But um, once again, boots on the ground to see if there's heavy hunting pressure there or if just uh, no deer signs whatsoever. Well, I hope that was informative to you all, gave you an idea of how I kind of approach uh, pre-scouting an area before you know I actually ever even get into the area. I definitely recommend having three or four spots um, to scout, places to go. You could get out there and it can look great from Google Earth and it's just impenetrable with thick brush on the ground that you can't get into or you don't find any deer sign or you just find too much hunter sign. Uh, you got too much hunting pressure back there. You got flags, tacks in the trees. Um, I'll, I'll follow in ribbon markings sometimes and then always pay attention to the trees. You can see where people have taken climbers up. If you find a good ambush point, check the trees, see if somebody's been hunting there with a climber. Uh, it'll save you the headache of setting up there and uh, come hunting season, somebody, uh, somebody else has already got that spot as well. There you have it. Thanks for tuning in.